Welcome back everyone to another Amped 5 update video. We have a huge update to introduce to you today, introducing lots of new features as well as changes in some of the behavior of the old filters. In this update, we've focused on improving our presentation tools within 5, as well as introducing a new filter called the Variable Motion Deblurring Filter. So we will start with the new filter, the variable motion deblurring. Now this filter allows you to tackle a blurring issue frame by frame in a video. So when you've got a motion blur that is changing throughout your video, you can now restore this using the variable motion deblurring. Okay, so let's jump into five. Let's take a look at the sample that we're going to restore using the variable motion deblurring filter. So in this sample, you can see that as we navigate through the frames, the degree of the blur changes. As we go further along the video, the blur size is increasing. So the blur is getting longer. So if we tried to restore this using our traditional method of motion deblurring, it would work for the first, say, 10 frames that have all got a similar blur length. But later on in the video, that restoration wouldn't work anymore. And that's why we designed and implemented this variable motion deblurring filter, because it allows us to restore a motion blur that is changing throughout the video rather than just a static blur. So I'm going to show you how we can use this filter. Okay, so we can find the variable motion deblurring filter under the deblurring category. And after I apply this filter, we should take a look at the filter settings quickly. Let's just talk about them quickly. Now first, we've got two tabs. We have the variable settings and we've got the constant settings. Okay, so in the variable settings tab then, we have the settings for the blur, which is specific to each frame. So these are the settings that we will change frame by frame and they're broken down into the size, angle and thickness of the blur. And then we have a box that will save all these values called the blur values. And finally, we have a point spread function, which is the visual representation of our blur. Okay, now we're going to move over to the constant settings then. So these are the settings that will remain constant throughout the video. So you will only need to adjust these settings once. And we can break these settings down into the frame interpolation type. This is a method of allowing us to deblur by just doing a few frames in the video and the rest of it being interpolated. We have the noise slider. This is we can use to adjust how much noise is within our video. And then we also have the mode. This will change the deblurring mode from linear to replica. Now, if you've got a blur that is a linear blur, you'll use the linear method. And if you see the replica type of blurring, it's a much more rare type of blur. If you see that, you'll change it to replica. Finally, then we have the boundary conditions. So as we're adjusting the blur on these video frames, the edges of the video frames are gonna become distorted in a way, and we can change how these are interpolated using the boundary conditions. Okay, so let's take a look at applying this filter. So at the moment I'm on frame zero and I'm gonna start rectifying and restoring this blur. So you can see I'm just looking at the license plate and I'm trying to find the two points that match. Um, I'm gonna quickly go into the noise here because I can see there's a lot of noise and I just wanna remove that. And now I'm gonna to have to go back to my variable settings and just fine tune these settings until I find the right size value. At the moment, it's a little bit off. Okay, so by reducing it down to around 23, we can see our license plate coming into view. Just quickly check the angle, see if I need to adjust that slightly. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So if I play the video now, you'll see that these value settings that I've chosen so far for frame zero will be applied to all the frames. And in these first 10, 15 frames or so, those values are sufficient at restoring this blur. But as we're progressing through, you can see that because this blur 
is increasing in size throughout the video, these values that I've set for frame zero are no longer sufficient at restoring this blur. So what I'm gonna need to do is fix the final frame of this video. So I'm gonna move over to frame 106 and I'm going to again restore this license plate using these settings. So I'm gonna start off by increasing the size. It looked like the blur size was increasing. So I'm gonna increase the size of the D blur. You can see by doing that, I've got a value around 35. So that's gonna start restoring this one. I don't really need to play around with the angle too much. And I'm just gonna quickly have a look at the thickness. So the thickness is if there's a optical blur going on as well as a motion blur, but here we don't need to adjust it. And there's gonna be no harm jumping back into those constant settings just to check that noise uh, slider. So now that I've also fixed the final frame, all the frames in between zero and 106 should now be interpolated. So the restoration of the blur should be interpolated. And you can see that we're at around frame 35 now, and it's still deblurring well. So the interpolation method in our constant settings is working perfectly for this. Now, if there was a frame in, in the middle that wasn't quite restored properly, we would be able to just jump to that frame and again, adjust our size to get that frame looking right. Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed the introduction to our variable motion deblurring filter. I was very excited to share this with you. It was very sought after, and I think we can all agree that this is gonna be incredibly powerful in our cases. So I hope you're looking forward to using it in the future. Okay, so let's move on to the next new filter that we're introducing in this version, which is freeze frame. Now I'm very excited to introduce this one. I did a lot of work testing this filter to get it just right. Ever since I joined the Amped team, one of the things I wanted to focus on was improving our presentation capabilities within Five. So not only am I going to introduce the freeze frame filter, I'm also going to show you how we can use that in combination with the annotation filter. And I will also introduce a new way of tracking that's been implemented for the annotation filter, which is called keyframing. Okay, so let's start off with the new filter, the freeze frame itself. I'm just going to navigate through this video and find a frame that I want to freeze for a set amount of frames. Once I've chosen the frame I want to use, so in this instance, I'm just using a, a frame where I can relatively see the license plate quite well. I'm going to go ahead and freeze this. So we can find the freeze frame filter within our presentation group. And you'll see once I've applied this filter, the filter settings are here and I can just select a duration that I want this to be applied for. I also have some settings where I can add graphics depending on what I want to be shown once it's frozen. So I've added the graphics of the countdown and the pause symbol. I've placed it at the top of the screen. This is completely customizable. We can separate the lines and we can adjust the font and the size and the color, etc. So there's lots of customization here for that. You'll see in the bottom in my uh, player bar that that blue highlighted area is the frozen duration. So next I'm gonna annotate on top of this frozen duration. So I'm gonna start off with just doing a magnification of the license plate. And we've seen the annotation filter before, but I just wanted to show you how well these combine together to allow us to do some nice presentation features within our videos. Now to set this for the duration of the frozen frame, I just need to right click and set from this frame. And then until the end of the duration, so set until this frame. Finally, I'm also gonna add some text to this. So just the same way as I did the magnify, I'm just gonna create a text box. Uh, I'll put that this is the suspect vehicle. And again, we're gonna customize this. 
So I can give it a background and a background and a border color and just position this in place. And then I also need to set the duration for this one for that frozen range. Again, we just right click and set from and until. So if I play this back now, you'll see we're gonna, the vehicle's gonna come into view, our frozen frame's gonna start, and we'll see the annotations on top. So moving on from the freeze frame, while we've got the annotations selected, I want to show you the new tracking method that we have within our annotations, which is the keyframe tracking. So for this, I'm gonna use a spotlight on this vehicle. So let's go ahead and create that spotlight. So I'm just drawing around our vehicle. I'll just uh, customize the size just a little bit. And then if you've not seen the annotations before and the spotlight in the annotations before, we can completely customize this spotlight too. So here I'm just adjusting the contrast and the brightness to how I want it. And we can also give this a, a border and a border color changing the border thickness. And then once I'm happy with this, I'm gonna to toggle my keyframe. So I'm introducing my first keyframe of this spotlight and you can see that in the top left. Now, all I need to do to use the keyframe into track is just move along my video, reposition the spotlight and create a new keyframe. And I'll do this once more. So again, I'm just gonna move ahead a few frames, reposition my spotlight and toggle that keyframe. And what this will do is in between the keyframes, the frames in between, they will, the position of the spotlight will be interpolated. So if you change the position or the size of this spotlight using the toggle keyframes, it's gonna be inter interpolated in between the frames. And this method will work with all the annotation types. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next part of the update. Here we're gonna be taking a look at the Convert DVR interface because we've made some changes here to make it easier for you to analyze your video when it can't play directly straight away. And also we've changed how the frame analysis works and a few little extras that we'll look at as well. So let's jump right into this. So the main change you'll see is when you bring in a file that can't be played directly and you need to convert, we get this new advanced file info button in this uh, dialog that pops up. So it's telling us that we need to do further analysis and possibly conversion to get it to play. So we can jump straight into advanced file info from this point. So it's gonna open up the advanced file information and in here we can start to analyze this file and figure out why it's not playing. So we can take a look at the format, we can take a look at the codec, and we can determine whether this file is using a proprietary container or a proprietary con codec, and that will tell us whether we need to copy stream this or transcode it. We've also made some changes to the frame analysis and the group of pictures analysis. So now when we run that frame analysis, you're going to be able to see some information about those frames straight away. And in the bottom left, we're going to have this progress bar that's going to be updating throughout. So you know how long roughly it's going to take to analyze all the frames within this video. So in the previous versions, you wouldn't get any information straight away and you would just have to wait for it to finish. This time we're going to get that information straight away. And if we go over to the group of picture analysis, it's telling us that that frame analysis is taking place first and we need to wait for that to finish and reach 100% before we can jump into the group of picture analysis. So I'm just gonna stop this for now. You also see that we've got this opening five button throughout. So when I was in the advanced file info, there was also an opening five. So after you've determined what you need to do to this file, you can just press opening five and start to configure your convert DVR. So here I realized that the codec was standard, so I just needed to put it into a container. So I've just placed it into an AVI container and that's allowed me to open this video up in five. Another thing to note 
here is that we've adjusted how the text works in Five. So for example, the low timestamp, the text of the timestamp will be automatically resized depending on the frame size of the video. So here you can see that it's an appropriate size compared to the frame size of the video because it's automatically being adjusted. And this feature is throughout all the text filters within Five. So for example, adding text, so the add text filter, this will also have a size that's automatically uh, selected for us in accordance to the frame size of the video. Okay, as I mentioned, this was a huge update and we're now at the final part of this update video. And we're just gonna speak about the link filters and the new behavior that they have in Amped 5 after this update. So we've just made a few changes uh, to them to benefit the users because we realized that some users were using these uh, in the incorrect way. So the link filters are the filters like Multiview and Timeline. So let's jump back into Five and have a look at my project. So here you can see I've got three different chains, uh, three different videos, and I've taken uh, different ranges in these videos. But look at the frame rates. At the moment, the frame rates are different. And this was a problem with the previous way the link filters worked. The link filters allowed you to add videos with different frame rates. And this was causing issues when users were exporting because they didn't realize they were adding videos with different frame rates. So I've just quickly gone through the different clips there. So let's go try timeline these. Now before it would auto populate the chains in the inputs to add, but now we need to add them manually. So I'm gonna add the first one and let's take a look what happens when I try to add a different frame rate video. You see, we get this warning. It's telling us that the frame rates don't match. We need to make them match before we can add them. So I'm just gonna remove this and I'm gonna change the frame rate of this video using either change frame rate or convert frame rate. In this instance, I'm gonna use the change frame rate and change it to 30, which is the same as the part one clip. And then I'm gonna copy and paste that for part three as well. So now if we go back to the timeline, we'll be able to add them without any problem. This is just to make you aware of this new behavior that the link filters will no longer auto populate and you need to do that analysis and match the frame rates yourself before applying the timeline. Okay, thank you everyone for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you're excited to use the new filters and features within Five. There are a few that I haven't mentioned, which you'll be able to see in the change log after you update Five. So make sure you go there and have a quick look. But until next time, Thank you very much and take care.